Hello, and welcome to the FHWA Innovative Finance video series. I'm Patricia Cahill, and I'm pleased to introduce Cynthia Essenmacher, the Tolling Program Manager at FHWA Center for Innovative Finance Support. Hello, everyone. Introduction. In this video, we'll provide an overview of tolling and pricing techniques that transportation agencies can use to generate revenue and manage travel demand. Tolling and pricing roads are two ways in which transportation agencies or other authorities responsible for owning and maintaining transportation infrastructure can accomplish their transportation goals. These can include managing travel demand on the network or paying for the maintenance, rehabilitation, or construction of new roads. Tolling versus pricing. Before we get into the details of tolling and pricing, let's get our terms straight. What do we mean when we say tolling and how does it differ from pricing? Tolling involves the imposition of per use fees on motorists to utilize a highway. Historically, these fees have been fixed tolls that vary by vehicle type or distance, but not by time of day. Their primary purpose has been to generate revenue. Pricing also involves the imposition of fees on a road. However, the fees vary based on the capacity and level of travel demand. The fees may vary according to a fixed schedule or in real time, based on actual travel conditions. This idea is sometimes known as congestion pricing, value pricing, variable pricing, peak period pricing, or market-based pricing. Priced highway facilities typically charge higher fees during peak periods of demand, like rush hour, and lower fees during off-peak times. While pricing does generate revenue, the primary goal is to manage congestion, environmental impacts, and other external costs. The reason for which the operating agency charges for road use is the key distinction between tolling and pricing. If the purpose is primarily to charge a fee for the use of the facility to generate revenue, it's tolling. If the purpose of the fee charged is to manage demand, reduce environmental impacts or congestion, and it generates revenue, it's pricing. Types of tolled and priced facilities. Now let's talk about the different types of tolling and pricing facilities. Traditional tolling, which most people may be familiar with, is a flat toll to access an entire highway facility. Sometimes, larger vehicles are tolled at a higher rate, and tolls may increase with the distance the vehicle travels, but access to the highway requires payment. Tolling an entire facility generates revenue, but offers agencies little control over demand or congestion. Priced managed lanes, on the other hand, provide agencies with more options in how to control travel demand in a corridor. Priced managed lanes are designated managed travel lanes that offer users the option to pay a fee to experience a more reliable trip, which can reduce overall congestion. Rather than pricing the entire facility, individual lanes, often one or two in both directions, may be priced and operate parallel to the free general purpose lanes. Priced managed lanes offer a more reliable travel alternative than a road with only general travel lanes, especially in congested corridors because they are designed to ensure a higher travel time predictability. During congested periods, drivers in price managed lanes travel typically faster than those in general purpose lanes. The agency that owns or operates the road may choose to use the revenue from the price lanes to increase transit service or make other investments to further reduce congestion. Price managed lanes use electronic toll collection and traffic information systems that make it possible to provide variable toll pricing, either in real time or through a fixed variable schedule. Drivers receive information on price levels and travel conditions via variable message signs, providing information they need to decide whether to use the price managed lanes or the general purpose lanes. Price managed lanes are generally considered pricing, not tolling because their primary objective is to manage congestion. There are two types of price managed lanes, high occupancy toll lanes or hot lanes and express toll lanes or ETLs. Let's go over each of these. Hot lanes use price, occupancy and access restrictions to maintain free flow traffic conditions, even during peak periods. Hot lanes are high occupancy vehicle lanes or HOV lanes converted to a toll facility that allow users to pay for access to the lane without meeting the minimum passenger requirements. V 
Vehicles that meet the passenger requirements typically may use hot lanes for free. Drivers and vehicles that do not meet passenger requirements may choose between the general purpose lanes or the hot lanes, paying to avoid congestion. Express toll lanes allow drivers to pay a toll to avoid congestion or increase travel time reliability. ETLs generally charge all vehicles, either a fixed or variable toll, regardless of how many occupants are in the vehicle. Because there is no occupancy requirement, ETLs do not incentivize ride sharing. Enforcement is much simpler and less costly than hot lanes because there is no need to enforce vehicle occupancy. Federal Tolling and Pricing Programs Under federal law, there are four programs that allow some agencies to implement tolls on roads that they manage. The two mainstream programs are referred to by the section of Title 23 of the U.S. Code that authorizes their use, Section 129 and Section 166. Two pilot programs, the Interstate System Reconstruction and Rehabilitation Pilot Program and the Value Pricing Pilot Program also authorize tolls. Before we go into the four programs, let's provide some context. Under Section 301 of Title 23 of the U.S. Code, there is a general prohibition on the imposition of tolls on federal aid highways. However, Title 23 and other statutes have carved out certain exceptions through special programs. These programs allow tolling to generate revenue to support highway construction activities and or enable the use of road pricing for congestion management. If federal funds have been used or will be used on the highway, then the public authority responsible for the facility must qualify for federal tolling authority under one of these programs. A facility that is constructed as a public-private partnership, or P3, still requires authority from one of the four programs if federal aid funds have ever been used or are planned for use on the highway segment. For more information on P3s, check out the P3 video in this series. Now let's discuss the two Title 23 tolling programs, Section 129 and Section 166. Section 129 provides the authority to toll specific lanes on federal aid highways in conjunction with new construction or other improvements to those highways. Some examples where public agencies may impose new tolls on federal aid highways are initial construction of a new highway, bridge, or tunnel, initial construction of new lanes on highways, bridges, and tunnels, other than on the interstate system, and conversion of that highway, bridge, or tunnel to a toll facility, as long as the number of toll-free lanes is not reduced. Initial construction of new lanes on highways, bridges, and tunnels on the interstate system, and conversion of that highway, bridge, or tunnel to a toll facility, as long as the number of toll-free non-HOV lanes is not reduced. Reconstruction or replacement of a bridge or tunnel, and reconstruction of a highway other than an interstate and conversion to a toll facility. For example, added lanes may be tolled under Section 129 as long as the number of general purpose lanes is not reduced. However, if a non-interstate project includes the reconstruction of existing lanes in addition to capacity expansion, then the entire facility may be tolled. Under Section 129, agencies may continue to toll the facility after construction costs have been paid. However, toll revenues are required to be used for debt service on the toll project, any costs necessary for operations, maintenance, and improvements of the toll facility, and if applicable, a reasonable return on investment of any private entity financing the project, and any payments under a revenue sharing agreement between the operator and the public agency. Any remaining revenues can then be used to fund a Title 23 eligible project. Under Section 166, existing HOV lanes may be priced, thereby converting HOV lanes into hot lanes. For HOV lanes on the interstate system, the local metropolitan planning organization must be consulted on the placement and amount of tolls on the converted lanes. All tolls on newly constructed or newly converted lanes must be variably priced and collected electronically in order to manage travel demand. There are a few requirements that apply whenever a toll authority converts an HOV lane to hot operations under Section 166. First, states must certify to FHWA that they will meet Section 166 requirements, including enforcement and operational performance monitoring, evaluation, and reporting. 
The state must demonstrate that the presence of paying vehicles in the hot lane has not degraded traffic service and must submit an annual report on the impacts that vehicles have on the operation of the facility. Second, states must demonstrate that programs are in place to inform motorists how they may use the managed lane, either in a non-paying HOV vehicle or a paying hot vehicle. And third, states must indicate that they have or will have an automated electronic toll collection system in place on the managed lanes. Toll revenues collected under Section 166 are subject to the same limitations that apply to toll revenues under Section 129. Now let's discuss the two federal pilot programs. The Interstate System Reconstruction and Rehabilitation Pilot Program, or ISRRPP, allows a state to collect tolls on an interstate facility to fund the reconstruction or rehabilitation of the facility. The ISRRPP, authorized under Section 1216B of the Transportation Equity Act for the 21st Century, or T21, allows the state to toll only if the facility could not otherwise be adequately maintained or functionally improved without the collection of tolls. Unlike Section 129, agencies can toll the whole facility rather than just some of the lanes. Toll revenues may be used for operations and maintenance, debt service, or reserve funds but toll revenues must be spent on the facility. The ISRRPP accommodates up to three facilities at a time, each of which must be geographically located in different states. Once selected for ISRRPP participation, a state has three years to fully satisfy the program criteria, complete environmental review and permitting, and execute a toll agreement with FHWA. A one-year extension is allowed if the state demonstrates material progress toward implementation of its pilot project. The Value Pricing Pilot Program, or the VPP program, provides transportation agencies with options to manage congestion on highways through tolling and pricing mechanisms, such as peak pricing, pricing by time of day, or congestion pricing. The VPP program was initially authorized under Section 1012B of the Intermodal Surface Transportation Efficiency Act of 1991, or ICE-T, as the Congestion Pricing Pilot Program, and was later renamed the Value Pricing Pilot Program under T21. The VPP program allows states or toll authorities to toll projects that cannot be accommodated under the Section 129 or Section 166 programs, including pricing existing lanes on an interstate. There are 15 slots for agencies to participate in the VPP program, and each participating agency may have one or more toll projects in the program. Agencies that apply to toll under this program require approval by the Secretary of Transportation. FHWA staff will work with you to interpret federal laws and assess whether your project meets the criteria of any of the four federal tolling and pricing programs. Project examples. Now let's walk through a few projects that have used these programs to implement tolling or pricing on a facility. Our first example comes from Washington State. SR 520 is a major access freeway into downtown Seattle, crossing Lake Washington from the east. The segment of SR 520 crossing Lake Washington comprised of a floating bridge that experienced serious congestion as it carried twice as much traffic than it was originally designed to carry. The bridge was also reaching the end of its useful life. To address congestion, King County, the Puget Sound Regional Council, and the Washington State Department of Transportation decided to construct a new floating bridge to replace the original one and widen segments of the road from four lanes to six, including an HOV lane in each direction. The agencies also introduced a toll on the SR520 bridge under the VPP program to manage congestion and generate revenue. The fees, which are collected through an all-electronic toll collection system, were set higher during peak periods to discourage some users from using the facility during times of congestion. The toll revenues help fund construction of the new bridge. Our second example is from Illinois. The Chicago Skyway is a 7.8-mile elevated toll road in southeast Chicago, which includes an elevated mainline structure crossing the Calumet River. In 1961, at the time of construction, 
the city of Chicago entered into a Section 129 agreement with FHWA, which allowed the use of federal aid funding for the Skyway's construction. In 2003, the city of Chicago and FHWA modified the agreement to outline the parameters of the city entering a long-term lease of the highway to a private entity. The Skyway Concession Company, or SCC, a limited liability corporation, assumed operations on the Skyway in January of 2005. This agreement between SCC and the city of Chicago was the first long-term lease of an existing toll road in the United States. Summary. Tolling is an effective strategy to generate revenue, and pricing is an effective strategy to manage travel demand. There are two mainstream federal tolling and pricing programs, and two federal tolling and pricing pilot programs available to transportation agencies. Agencies can work with FHWA staff to discuss their tolling and pricing project ideas to identify which program might meet their needs. For more information about tolling and pricing, please visit the FHWA website. Please note that except for the statutes and regulations mentioned, the contents of this video do not have the force and effect of law and are not meant to bind the public in any way. This video is intended only to provide information and clarity to the public regarding existing requirements under the law or agency policies. Thank you for watching this video. Please check out the other videos in this series for more information about innovative finance for transportation projects.